So Roblox has fixed the audio analyzer from the new audio API and so the information brought to me in the comments by one of you guys. So I'm going to make a video on it. But as usual, leave a like and subscribe to support the channel and let's get to it. So the first thing I need to mention is that the audio API is still a beta feature and it's not recommended to use it in live games. But to enable it, you need to go into file, then beta features, and then scroll down to the new audio API right here. Then press on save, restart studio, and you will be able to use the new audio API instances. And now let's just talk about setting everything up. So unlike the normal sound instances, for the audio API we need something called an audio player. So I'm just actually going to insert a part and just make it anchor. And I'm going to do this in a separate folder. So this part is going to be the player part. And I'm just going to make it green to separate it a little bit better. Because like I said, to play a sound from the audio API, we need to insert the audio player instance into the part. And then we want to put it a song, audio ID or whatever into the asset ID property. And I'm just going to use this audio for the video. This is a free sound that's uploaded by Roblox onto the platform. So I'm just going to firstly insert the instance and just copy the sound ID from right here. Then just paste it into the asset ID and then just remove the sound instance. So now we have something that will play the audio, but we also need something that will emit it into the world. So I'm just going to duplicate this part. And firstly, before adding an audio emitter, I'm going to add an audio fader. And this part is going to be named fader part. And you don't have to set everything like I do in this video. I'm just doing this for simplicity. But after we get the audio fader, we also need an audio emitter. So this is going to be the emitter part and it will use the audio emitter. And really quickly I'm just going to make a folder and name it wires. Because to connect the audio player to the audio fader, then the audio fader to the audio emitter, we need to use a wire for that. Where this wire is going to be the player into fader. So we select the source instance to be the audio player and the target instance to be the audio fader. Then add another wire. This one is going to be the fader into emitter. So just select the audio fader into the audio emitter. And now if I just add a script into the audio analyzer folder and change its run context to be on the client, because this doesn't have to be done on the server, I'm just going to make a line of code to the reference to the audio player. And here I'm just going to do audio player and then the play method, as well as change the looped property to be on true. So this is basically going to play our audio, but we are not going to be able to hear it. If I just do a playtest and come close to this part, there is going to be no audio track that we can actually hear. And that's because we need some kind of a listener that we can create by adding a local script into the starter player scripts. where this one is going to be called add listener. And all this script is going to do, this is going to create an audio listener that's going to listen to any audio emitting from the world. So the local listener is equal to a new instance audio listener. And I'm also going to make a reference to the camera because we're going to put the audio listener inside of the camera. Then you need to change the listener that parent is equal to the camera. And then we need to create an audio device output because this listener needs to stream the audio into our device. So I do local audio device is equal to instance at new and then audio device output. Then we can set the parent to be the listener and then we just need to connect them through the wire. We are first need to set the source instance which is equal to the listener and then the wire target instance that's going to be equal to the audio device output. So now with this add listener script, if I do a playtest, we are able to actually hear the audio. So now this is a basic setup for the audio API. So now let's move to the audio analyzer with the spectrogram right here. And this time I'm going to duplicate the emitter part and just name this one analyzer part, where I'm going to insert an audio analyzer, which also needs to be connected with a wire from the audio fader. So I need to add another wire, this one is going to be the fader into the analyzer, where the source is of course the audio fader, and the target is the audio analyzer. 
And now this part, what he's going to do, is going to analyze the audio track. But first I'm going to move into the documentation before I actually get into the scripting. So the audio analyzer is going to have the peak level and the RMS level properties, which are set to read only. But these two, these aren't really what we care about, it's mostly the methods. And the get spectrum method to be exact. And now what this method does, it returns the frequency spectrum of the last audio buffer as an array of numbers. And the elements of the array are root mass square volume levels evenly spaced from 0 to 24,000 Hz. And what this exactly means is that it's going to return a table where each element is a volume level that's inside of this range. And how can we basically just translate that into scripting? So if you see I'm just going to duplicate the spectrogram and just move this one into the audio analyzer folder. And now the number of parts in the spectrogram doesn't really matter. What matters is going to be the orientation, where you want to keep the same orientation for all of the parts on the spectrogram. And that's because when you change its size, we basically just want them going like this, instead of if let's say this one was rotated, instead it would go like this. And just to present it on the previous example, I'm going to just comment this line so we don't hear the audio double from both of the examples at once. So if I do a playtest, you can see the analyzer basically working correctly, right? But if I duplicate the number of these parts, it's also going to work fine, except it's going to have a wider variety of range. So it's going to be a bit more accurate. So I'm just going to uncomment this line and let's get into scripting. So first you just want to get references to the audio analyzer and the spectrogram folder, like this. So here we get the spectrogram and the audio analyzer, and then we want to get a local function that's going to be called setup, where this function is going to be called on a local variable. And that's because we want to return basically a table of all of these parts. So it's just the local parts is equal to the spectrogram get children, but there is two things that we need to actually do with this. One is that since this is a local script, we need to wait for all of these to actually load on the client, so we just do a repeat loop until the spectrogram get children is more or equal to the number of the children that we currently have. In my case it's 27, so I'm just going to do a task wait until everyone is loaded. Then we want to return the parts, but first what we want to do is actually sort them by position. Since if this isn't sorted, it's basically just going to make it so random volume ranges are going to be assigned to random parts. So we want to do table that sort. And you can see that there is a comp, which is a comparison callback. So we want to sort the parts table and then give it a function where A is going to be the first index and B is going to be the next index that we want the function to compare. And this one is going to basically just do a return on the red axis, which is going to be the red one. You can see from this box right here. So you just want to do a dot position dot x. And we want to check if this one is more than b dot position dot x. And now since I don't really have the time for this right now, I'm going to get two functions from the audio API place and I will just explain them. So now one function is going to be the lerp, which is a linear interpolation. And another one, which is a main function in the script, is going to be the get mapping beans. And now this one requires a bean count where this bean count is going to be the parts from the setup. And then it says its own beans variable, which is the audio range returned by the getSpectrum method. Then it basically just checks if the spectrum was empty, and if so, it's basically just going to return a table containing only zeros. But then there is a result, which does basically just a lot of math, where it gets the power value, the lower, the upper and the fluctuate, then says the result for the index. And what all of this map is basically just used for, this is for calculating the size from the spectrum range to later translate it into the parts. And it's done in a while loop. Where again we do local beans is equal to the get mapping beans from the length of the parts. And that's also why I said that the number of these parts right here doesn't really matter, because this function is just going to space everything out separately. Then we need to do a for loop to set every value from the returned result to the parts. Where the current part 
is going to be the parts from index. Since for part 1, which is going to be this part based on the sorting from right here, is going to have the current size and then a set size from the result. Where in this case we only want to change the y size, so it's going to go like this. So now we just want to clamp it. And I'm just going to format this a little bit differently. So we want to clamp this one from 10 times beans from index. And we want to clamp it basically so it's not going to extend its current range, or the size rather, when this size is basically just set to 10. So we just want to go from 0, if it's going to be completely silent, and then the z value is going to be the current size, that z. And this should actually just be while task wait do, instead of the true. So now if I just do a playtest, it's not going to work because I messed something up, also in the meantime, when I'm trying to figure out what's wrong, do you guys know that I make UGC items? You can go check them out, the link is going to be in the description. But anyways, oh it was supposed to be the current part, not parts. So now if I do a playtest, everything should work fine like this. Except it's going from the different direction, so let me just fix that. And it should work if I just reverse this right here. And here it is. So yeah, we've got a working audio visualizer. And let's see what happens if I just make this one like really long. And this one is actually just going to be 216 parts. And yeah, it's actually just going to visualize the audio still. So yeah, this is actually pretty cool technology. But you may also ask about the performance, right? And since this is a lot of parts, this script is currently running at, well, 3, almost 4% of activity. So that's actually a little bit. So what would happen if we actually made it wait, let's say, 0.1 second? And it's still going to visualize the audio, but this time it's going to do it a little bit slower. And it's going to be the same if I make it wait, let's say, one second. But yeah, that's for the audio analyzer instance, and that's basically going to be everything for today. So go join my Roblox group and leave a like and subscribe to support the channel. And yeah, hope you guys enjoyed the video, and see ya.